If you live abroad or you're thinking about living abroad and you want to save money, this video is for you. Stick around to find out my top 10 tips for saving money while living abroad and watch to the end to find out my three bonus pieces of advice, which if you follow, you can change your financial future. Now, one thing to keep in mind before we get started is that spending money is often an emotional response. If you get to the bottom of why you're spending so much and attack the issue at its source, you can overcome this problem once and for all. So now, let's start on my money saving tips, but first, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you can keep getting great advice just like this video. Number one, cut out daily coffee. The first one is a no-brainer and it's an easy adjustment to make. If you're going to Starbucks once a day and spending $5 per day on coffee, that amounts to $140 a month and $1,820 per year. Make your own coffee at home and invest the savings. Number two, get rid of debt. Getting rid of student loans and credit card debt was the most important thing I ever did. It's not easy, but if you make yourself a goal and even make some sacrifices to work in another country where you can earn more than your home country, you'll be able to get out of debt. Also, if you understand that spending with a credit card is an addiction, you can treat the problem at its source. Try and replace the activity of shopping and spending money with something else that is productive, healthier, and less expensive, like reading a book or taking a walk. Then reward yourself each time you successfully avoid unnecessary spending. And if you want to go abroad and make more money and increase your saving potential, stick around until the end to find out my bonus tips for how I did it. Number three, use Splitwise. Splitwise is an app that allows you to track what you spend in conjunction with others, like your spouse or friends, and then splits the amounts for you. That way you know exactly what you spend and what you owe. You can also track additional expenditures that you make on your own, and the app gives you handy reports at the end of every month. Number four, have a budget. This is also a no-brainer, and if you're not doing this already, you need to start doing it today. Here are some easy steps to start your budgeting system. Number one, spend one month observing how much you spend normally and add up your expenditures. Number two, take a look at it. If you think your spending is too much in one area, then reduce it. Number three, set limits for spending in each area. Number four, track how much you spend during the month, sticking to those limits. You can use a simple Excel spreadsheet or an app to enter in all of your expenditures. Number five, try this for three months. Challenge yourself to stick to the limits you have set for the period and then reward yourself for sticking to them. Number five, live minimally and get rid of excess stuff. It costs too much to ship things from place to place. So if you're an expat, you are best off getting rid of your attachment to things. After all, happiness is not built by being surrounded by mounds of useless stuff. If you're an expat and you want to move abroad, life gets easier the more stuff you get rid of. Believe me, I used to be a pack rat. I used to collect souvenirs from every place and keep lots of clothing, books, and other general stuff. And then I got smart. I got rid of most of my stuff when I was making a transition from Italy to India, and here's how I did it. I had three months, so I made a goal to get rid of four bags of stuff every weekend until my departure. Some of that was trash, and some of that was giveaways like books, clothes, and pieces of furniture. By emptying out four bags of stuff per weekend, the whole ordeal was much more manageable and less overwhelming. I also focused on one area per weekend. For example, one closet or one corner of my house. By breaking up this huge piece of work into bite-sized pieces, I was able to evaluate with a clear head every part of my belongings and properly decide what to do with it. By the end of the three months, I had downsized everything into two suitcases and I was ready for my departure for India. Number six, cancel monthly subscriptions and apps. We may subscribe unknowingly to too many apps and services, especially if you're an Apple slave with an iPhone. iPhone makes it too easy to subscribe to apps which may seem inexpensive. $3 here, $10 there, but over time, those add up. Well, my rule is that if I haven't used an app or service in three months, it deserves canceling. To check your subscriptions on iPhone and cancel them, tap on settings, tap on your name at the top, tap on subscriptions to view them, and whatever you're not using, just cancel it. Number seven, minimize expenditures on hair. This one and the next one are for the ladies out there. Maybe some guys too. You may be one of those people who likes to get highlights in your hair. But let's just think about two things for one minute. 
First, the cost. If you spend $75 every six weeks to get highlights, well, that amounts to approximately $650 per year. And then for the second thing, remember that natural is always better. Stop the highlights, let your natural beauty shine through, and your hair as well as your wallet will be much healthier. That leads me to number eight. Similarly, cut out other beauty expenses. Stop it with the manicures, pedicures, eyebrows, or other beauty procedures that you can do on your own. You can paint your own nails, you can pluck your own eyebrows. If you spend $70 on a manicure, pedicure, and eyebrow waxing, and you do that every three weeks, that's approximately $1,200 per year. Number nine, go for budget travel instead of lavish vacations. You don't have to give up your love of traveling to save money. I frequently go on trips, but book everything myself on budget websites like skyscanner.net for flights, booking.com, or Airbnb for accommodation. All other trips and adventures while in the place are self-organized, and I feel this is the best way to travel and also explore new places. The last one always gets some raised eyebrows and futile protests, so please be sure you're sitting down for this one. Number 10, give up your TV. I made a decision over 15 years ago to live without a TV. After all, TV is often an addiction, a time waster, a brain drain, and a money waster. If you think about how much you spend on cable channels per year, even if you spend on the low end of $25 per month for your boob tube addiction, that amounts to $300 a year, which could be spent on a round trip air ticket. So there you have my 10 tips for saving money, but it's not over. I also have three more pieces of advice which I saved to the end for you diehard savers. But first, let's look at our totals. If you do the following, cut out daily coffee, minimize expenditures on hair and beauty procedures and cut out TV, you're going to save almost $4,000 per year. Now, here we go with the last pieces of advice. Number one, give up driving. Now, just like my number 10 in the main list, this tip is a little radical, and I realize not for everyone. I often get a lot of mudslinging comments about this one, as anxious protesters insist, but, but, but I need a car. How can I take my kids to their soccer practices, and, and how can I go anywhere? Well, before you start to hyperventilate, keep in mind that I realize not everyone can just give up their car. It's a lifestyle choice, and one that every individual has to make. I happen to live in Italy, in a small city where you don't need a car and I can ride my bike or walk everywhere. But I chose to settle here partially because of the fact that you don't need a car. If you want to become an expat who's perpetually traveling and seeing the world, you may want to choose your home base as one which can have a no car lifestyle. Speaking of living abroad, that brings me to number two. Work in a country with high salary and low taxes. In 2016, I made a choice to work and live in Saudi Arabia for a few years. Now, that country unfortunately gets a bad rap in the media, but actually it's a wonderful place to live and work. There is a plethora of professional opportunities and the people are amazing. Moreover, I earned enough to buy two apartments in Italy and put one of them on rent, which brings me to my third and final piece of advice. Buy a piece of property and rent it out thereby generating some passive income. Why don't you consider taking a job for a few years in the Middle East where you can earn a high tax-free salary, get yourself out of debt, buy some property, and then start earning yourself some passive income. So that brings me to the end of my short video on tips for saving money as an expat. Thanks for watching and best of luck on your money-saving journey. Stay tuned for more videos on expat life, business abroad, and intercultural skills. Bye for now.